And welcome in to a Monday edition of the Backstage Pass. Of course, Monday is usually the Texas two-step we do here in Texas. Uh, coming up today at uh, 4.30, looking forward to catching up uh, with a great gentleman in country music. He's been doing this for a long time. Now, Jeff Carson is going to stop by today. Uh, we'll talk about those big hits back in 1995. Yeah, you remember them. The Car, Not On Your Love, Butterfly Kisses, all those great songs. We missed it last week uh, due to um, my daughter getting a little bit under the weather. So hopefully she's, she's uh, doing better now. And we'll, we'll talk to Jeff coming up today about 4.30 here on the Backstage Pass. As always, thanks to Bangtail Whiskey. I appreciate their support here on the uh, podcast and definitely appreciate uh, all they do here. Uh, Jeff McMahon coming up at 4.30 today as well. Join me for the Jeff interview uh, for Jeff Carson here. And just uh, thank everybody out there for tuning in. Uh, we're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube out there. So you can check us out uh, wherever we're located. And please welcome in the first guest today here on the show as uh, – a fine country artist who I found out there and discovered her music too. And would you believe this? Mother's favorite band was CC Top. We're getting somewhere with this. Dusty Lee joins us here on the show. Dusty, what's going on? Not a lot. How are you doing? <laughs> doing pretty good. Hanging in there. Uh, more stuff keeps coming in. It just uh, it baffles me every day that we started this about almost three years ago. And uh, we're not a shortage when it comes to great artists like yourself out there. So, hey, tell me this story. Growing up, let's start there. Uh, mom's favorite band. You know, we, we talked to Billy Gibbons here on the podcast just a few months ago and what a great uh, gentleman he was to meet. You've met him uh, before too. And just the, I guess those rock gods of the seventies, eighties and <laughs> getting that first name, which is uh, pretty cool after that great band ZZ top. And I guess is that kind of where it started for your mom? And was it kind of in the uh, music and the genes for the, the family history? You knew this was what you wanted to pursue from a young age. Definitely. Um, yeah. From, from a young age, uh, my mom was a huge um, I mean, music band in general, but ZZ Top was one of her favorite bands. And uh, rumor has it that I was uh, conceived in an outdoor ZZ Top concert. So <laughs> my claim to fame right there. Um, so when uh, I was supposed to be a boy, and for some reason, when I came out a girl, they decided to name me Dusty. I was supposed to be named Michael, whatever. Uh, so yeah, Dusty Lee and after a um, bass player, Dusty Hill. So I like that, which <laughs> and God rest his soul. I mean, I still... Yeah. It's not going to be the same. They're supposed to come through here next week for a concert. And I, I just, I wanted to go back then, but after the tragedy uh, that happened with Dusty Hill, I mean, God rest his soul. And definitely uh, it's, it'll never be the same without, without Dusty Hill being a part of that great group there. Well, tell me about this, uh, you know, growing up with that, that kind of that rock music and a little bit of this and that it kind of led you a little bit to, I guess the foray of country music and out there with some of the classics like Don Williams, KT Oslin, uh, Bob Seger and and people Reba and people that had enough ability in their voice to do crossovers and different genres of music. Tell me that story and, and kind of the musical influences. You know, I just I grew up with parents that loved every genre, um, anything from you know the rock gods of you know the '60s, '70s, '80s, um, Journey, you know, Heart. I mean, I, I I really there was no shortage of music in my house. Um, my mom was a huge um, 80s hair band, but she also loved her Jones and, you know, the greats of country music. So I really had this vast array of music that I could listen to. But, um, early on when I, when I started singing and, um, I guess realized that I, I could sing, um, it was more of the, the country ballads that I was drawn to, um, the ones that, you know, rip your heart out that I was always, you know, drawn to the ones that you could listen to over and over for hours, you know, Don Williams, Katie Oslin, um, some of the, a lot of people don't really know who Katie Oslin is and she's mm -hmm. one of my absolute favorites. So, um, but then at the end of the day, you know, especially when you're performing live, um, you know, those, those tear in your beer songs, just sometimes you don't <laughs> have what you need. So sometimes you need to, you know, kick the doors open and sing a little Pat Benatar or Guns N' Roses. So luckily I've, I was pretty fortunate to grow up with a, a really eclectic um, taste of music. So. Now tell me about this too, because uh, Idaho, and I know I'm correct on this too, because honestly that you get some of the best, country music singers to come out of the, uh, the, the that particular area there. And I've seen people, you know, I say Idaho and uh, Wyoming and just, it, it just a really great West coast kind of feel uh, to the country stars that are coming out of there, the future country stars. Give me a little bit of the kind of the feel of um, just growing up in that town and knowing that uh, this was going to be a, a tough road, a long journey, right? Yeah. I mean, Idaho, actually, I'm kind of impressed that some people actually know where Idaho is because usually I get the, well, I've never been to the Midwest. I'm like, well, hell me either. Um, so that's <laughs> usually where we, we land on that. But um, I mean, Idaho, yeah, growing up, you know, we had not a lot of huge, huge concert venues, but we got a lot of the greats, you know, Reba, mm -hmm. Brooks and Dunn. Um, so that's kind of where um, my, my 
passion for music and performing came from, from an, an early age. Um, but then I married at 18 and um, my husband wow. joined the military right thereafter. And we kind of traveled the countryside and um, I still sang, but it wasn't, you know, when you're young and you have kids and you're doing the, the family life thing, it wasn't in the magnitude of what I always wanted it to be. Um, but then once we, um, you know, we got out, he retired after about 15 years and we moved back to Idaho to be near family. Um, it, you know, 2011 kind of took a turn when my husband put this band together. Um, I'd never really sang live before. Um, I had horrible stage fright. And so that was a, a learning curve. I had, um, I found Jack Daniels and then I upgraded, um, to a little bit better whiskey, but that mm-hmm. took me edge off enough to, um, help me perform live without throwing up before each show. But, um, yeah, I mean, Idaho just has this, Boise especially has this really great music scene. Um, a lot of, you know, b- people come and they, they, I mean, we have a lot of people coming from, you know, Louisiana, Mississippi, um, LA. I mean, there's a, a pretty good group of people that, that, you know, throw their hand in Boise. And I have to say the music scene there is, it's pretty great. I, I, I enjoyed my time there for sure. Got a pretty good college football team there, Boise State, the Broncos, that uh, right. have known some noise the last three or four years in those major <laughs> bowl games that have done some upsets. One in particular I remember was <laughs> upsetting the Oklahoma Sooners in the Fiesta Bowl, I believe, just a couple of years yep. ago there, too. So that's uh, the blue turf, the Smurf turf, that's right? Right. That was a great thing. <laughs> yeah, my sister-in-law, she was a, she's a Sooners fan, and she was watching and – Oh, that was great. That was a that was a great game. <laughs> <laughs> I love that Smurf turf, and I, I tell you, boy, it was hard on the eyes when you tried to watch it on uh, television for game of the week or something like that. You just cringe, and I'm going to say, when you look at it again, you're like, okay, I'm okay. It's like looking at the sun. You're not supposed to, but man, <laughs> right. sometimes it's just too pretty enough not to. When it comes down to it, right. uh, I'm going to get to this story because I love this, and, and just kind of doing the research, I love this. But I want to play a song I'll first. Have you play? A song for us and grace is out there with uh, definitely uh one of the uh title tracks today and of course you guys are working on a new single yep. uh but let's let's have you play something for us and we'll come back and i got a really cool uh talking point i'm going to get to next that i, I really awesome. enjoyed in your bio that i really did some some homework on and some cool questions to kind of follow cool. up there so good i'll bring we'll my go. guitar player up here his name is drew plowman all right drew looking forward to i don't to play it. anything but the tambourine so. <laughs> <laughs> i asked him to come be here today so we'll get this set up real quick That'll work. Make sure we can okay. both fit in That'll this screen here. Look forward. Again, you can catch us out there. The Backstage Pass YouTube channel at Backstage Pass 409 on Facebook or at B Morrell 10. You may ask why 10. Well, I'm a DeAndre Hopkins fan of the Arizona Cardinals, the best wide receiver in football. There you go. At B Morrell 10, as I had to put the number there. That's the three, three different channels. You can catch us on right now. It's Dusty Lee here on the Backstage Pass presented by Bangtail Whiskey. Uh, take it away. Awesome. This one's called Take a Ride. Here we go. Let's go chasing black top dreams. Windows down, feeling free. Come, take a ride with me. We'll draw caution to the wind. Don't invite it back again. Come. Take a ride with me, take a ride with me, down this open road, take a ride with me, find out what the highway knows. Four wheels ready to roll. So what you waiting for? Come take a ride with me. And any destination's fine. We can take our own sweet time. Come take a ride with me. Take a ride with me. Down this open road Take a ride with me Find out what the highway knows Whoa, whoa. Oh, 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 oh. 
Don't chase some laptop dreams. Windows down, feeling free. Come, take a ride with me. Take a ride with me. Down this open road. Take a ride with me. Find out what the highway knows. Find out what the highway knows. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. And you could even mix that with a good uh, glass of that Canada Dry ginger ale. And it actually goes real well together. There's nothing you can't mix with bangtail whiskey and it not taste good. So there you go. Definitely get you a, a bottle of that. I know the there was inventory was... Getting back up to stock, and it should be. Like I said, it's so good. It's going to keep, uh, I guess, it just selling out out there. So easy liquor app or uh, check them out, bangtail.com. Bangtail Whiskey, appreciate their support here. Back on the backstage pass with Dusty Lee here. Uh, of course, it's a great, great Monday already. And, you know, you love a country song, Dusty, when you can sit there and just hum it the entire time you're singing. So that's what makes music <laughs> so much fun when you get into it. We'll have one more performance here in just a little bit. A little bit. And then, of course, uh, Jeff Carson coming up here a little bit on the backstage pass. It could be uh, great to catch up with him. I, you know, I want to get into this, too, because um, I kind of you know, did a little homework, as we always do here on the show, and bring a little bit to the table with uh, the research. And I love how uh, one of your you know big quotes out there is, you don't take life lying down. You're very aggressive. The military background is pretty pretty awesome, if, if I do say so myself. Um, jumping into something like that, knowing that I've had family, too, at the same time who have uh, served our country, which is uh, amazing that people uh, give up those sacrifices to make those sacrifices and, uh, you know, go do things that uh, are really outside the norm. And it's not for everybody, but for the people that in there, I mean, I salute our military every day for uh, defending our country and, and all the things that they do out there, every branch, every branch out there. Tell me a little bit about that background, just diving into uh, military family. And at the same time, kind of that, that slogan fits, not taking life lying down, just pulling yourself up by the bootstraps and going after what you want, right? Yeah, I mean, I think it started, um, my mom died when I was young, I was 15, and it kind of left with me and my sister and my dad. And I mean, that really kind of shapes you, you know, at a young age, you don't really, again, you just, you, you do what you have to do to move on. And so um, I met my husband shortly before my mom died. And then, um, yeah, we just, you know, we were young and joined the military and moved across country uh, from Idaho to Virginia. And I mean, it really makes you realize that you only have yourselves to rely on. You know, there's no family, there's no nothing to help you out. So you just, you, you do what you have to do. Um, and I mean, I feel like most military spouses um, relate to that. You know, you can't just, when things get tough, you can't just run home. Um, mm -hmm. And then my dad moved to Holland afterwards. So, I mean, I really was like, okay, <laughs> here I'm on my own. So we, um, I mean, we just made it work. It's like, you know, you, you don't do everything perfect, but you just figure it out along the way. And so that's, I mean, that's basically what we did. I'm going to give you a little scenario here and you tell me how uh, I know this is going to play out. It's just kind of the feeling I get when I make bold predictions here on the show. Uh, <laughs> what if you're standing up there one day and they say, Dusty Lee, you're now on the Grand Ole Opry. You're in the big circle. Let's do this. What kind, what emotions would come through you if you get a phone call like that one day? Oh, I'm already tearing up. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think that's something that um, I have to take a minute to get my shit together because <laughs> I think that's just, I think that's the defining moment when you're like, damn, I've made it. You know, it's like no matter how many stages you play on or 
who you get to play with. Um, I mean, I feel like that's the mothership right there. And so mm -hmm. for somebody to ask you to be a part of that, to do that, um, I mean, I, I could die the next day and be like <laughs> happy. So I feel like that's the payoff right there. That's the goal. That's always the goal. So I love that too. And you know, fans are very important just as family is in this. I call it the FNF friends and family and everybody out there, supporters. Um, you did a little kind of, uh, uh, by chance, uh, audition, if I remember, on The Voice. Is this correct? I did. Um, okay. So my, I can thank my husband for that. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, again, that whole stage fright thing used to get me. Um, and for years, everybody, you know, American Idol, when it came out, and everybody, you know, oh, you need to do this. And I always had an excuse. Oh, you know, I got kids, they're babies, I can't mm -hmm. travel, blah, blah, blah. Um, so my husband, one day I came into work and um, – during one of the times when he was active duty, we actually lived in North Carolina. I was a contractor and I worked for the Coast Guard. I was a technical writer. And so uh, we were on base together and I came in to work one day and um, the whole, my whole cubicle was decorated. There was this big sign um, tell me congratulations and everybody had signed it. And um, there's all these people and I'm looking around like, what? what is happening? And then my husband comes out and he hands me two plane tickets and um, he had submitted some video from our band and, um, to the voice and I got a pass to go to Atlanta to audition. Um, and it was, I mean, it was, it was quite the, it was quite the experience. I felt like, you know, she going through the, going through the motions, mm -hmm. but um, I, I really, I knew when I made it through um, quite a few rounds and I got to one of the, one of the last day's rounds mm -hmm. and um, there was these three executives sitting at this table and I was in there with another gentleman and uh, he he sang for a few seconds and then they kind of cut him off. And this man was, I mean, raise the hip, slap your mama good. This guy was amazing. And <laughs> I'll never forget his voice. And uh, he, they didn't even look up and they, they said next. And it was my turn. And he said, what's your name? And I said, Dusty Lee. And he said, I don't want your stage name. I want your real name. And I was like, Dusty Lee. And so he looked up and he took off his glasses and he's like, that, that's your real name. And I said, well, it's on my birth certificate and I didn't name myself. Mm -hmm. And so... He uh, kind of, you know, went back and forth a little bit. And then um, I sang a couple of songs and, and then he said, so what if I told you that we would, you know, move you to LA and, you know, yeah, you change your name and get rid of your band and, you know, maybe we'll cut your hair. And I gave him this look that I think he kind of knew. I was like, yeah, that's probably not going to happen. And he said, you know, he said, I'm going to give it to you straight. He said, I feel like you kind of know what you want. You know what you're going to go after. And, uh, you know, we really like to take people that, you know, are young. We can shape them. We can mold them. And I said, you know, I'm not your girl. I said, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to, first of all, I'm not going to, you're not going to boss me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. um, and that was that. I mean, they were great. It was awesome. It was a chance of a lifetime and I had a blast, but I mean, <clears throat> you know, sometimes they're just not willing to sell your soul to the devil yet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just to participate in a competition like that. And I've, I've heard exactly. people say it too. We've talked to you on the show who've done the idol and the voice and stuff like that. And they say, you know, it's great while it's going on. We got our kind of our pass and our the notoriety and the fans out there and build the fan base. But the work really begins when you step off a platform like that. Absolutely. And they've said that many, and many times. True. Now people are like, oh, you, you know, they, they made mm -hmm. you. And now you're like, I feel like they take a piece of who you actually are, you know, because they they make you so that, you know, people, you know, like in math. I, you know, I love the story, too, because, uh, you know, I think we talked about this. You were talking a few couple of weeks ago. You've done some sporting events. Now, tell me about uh the sporting events and your favorite ones. Is there songs that you kind of go in? I mean, I'm assuming the national anthem too has been kind of up there too for several sporting teams. Uh, what, what do you, uh, the enjoyment you get out of it too at the same time and knowing that uh, whether it's a crowd of 500 or 5,000, you're still putting it on the line every time you step out there. Absolutely. I mean, I don't think that there is any song besides the national anthem that makes me want to throw up. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and it doesn't matter if you're singing for five people or 5 million people. It's just, First of all, it's a really tough song. Um, it's, you know, got deep roots. It's about our, you know, our, our nation. And I feel like there's just a level of respect that goes into this song. Um, it was one that I absolutely hated performing for that reason. It's kind of like Patsy Cline. I just don't touch Patsy Cline because it's Patsy Cline. Um, mm -hmm. But because my husband's a pusher, um, he would, you know, sign me up for some of these uh, events. Uh, one of them, actually a few of the ones that I've done, the Steelheads in Idaho is a hockey team and, um, I got to sing the national anthem a few times for those events. And mm -hmm. it's always one of those great things where you, you, you step out on the, granted, I have to have a few shots of whiskey before I take the stage, especially during the national <laughs> anthem. Um, you get a little loose and feel good. And mm -hmm. then, um, 
there's just something, you know, that, that spotlight, you just, when you're ready to nail it and you know that you're feeling good. And um, when you hear that crowd, when everything is a pin drop silence and you hit that note and the crowd goes wild, mm -hmm. that's why you do it. That's, that's the, the raise the hair on your arms and the back of your neck. And I mean, it was awesome too. When I got off stage and the hockey, one of the hockey guys slapped me on the butt with his hockey stick. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. You're like, no, she's not the puck, but, <laughs> kind of fun, but yeah, it makes it worthwhile for sure. Hey, talk to me before we play this next song. Uh, talk to me about last year, uh, chaotic, crazy, uh, like anything we've ever seen before. Um, I've heard musicians use this word kind of loosely, but it, it does ring true. Um, you know, we turned to social media for keeping our fans updated for the next projects or single or full length album. But I'm going to use this word loosely, setbacks. Tell me what setbacks you had for 2020. You know, live shows were probably our biggest setback. Um, you know, we had this schedule of songs coming out. This, you know, my EP was coming out. And we had all of these, you know, touring dates to, to promote it. And, um, and I mean, everything just stopped. It was just a standstill. Mm -hmm. In, in a, a few senses, I was kind of relieved. Um, March, April, it was like I had this long list of stuff that I had not had time to get to. Um, and so it was like, okay, I have a little bit of time. I can, I can finally catch up. And then you start missing the gigging and June rolled around and it was like, okay, are we, you know, you, you're hoping that things are getting back to normal. Um, and then it just went on and on and on and on. And so it was like all of these, you know, we had so many awesome festivals that we had been working to get into for years, a few years, um, mm -hmm. that were, we had finally, you know, we finally gotten on the ro the roster and then, oh, and then they're canceling it. So I feel like the letdown was, was hard because, you know, luckily, I mean, a lot of musicians, you know, they're doing this full time and that's what, that's their livelihood. Luckily I had a job, a full time job. <laughs> I was very fortunate for that. Um, but you just, you miss your people, you miss the crowd, you miss the people. I mean, it really is the family and friends that, that promote your, your music, that come to your shows, that, you know, see you live, that make it worthwhile. That's why you do it, you know? And so it really, the setbacks really started to set in when, when we didn't have that anymore. It just wasn't available and shows were canceled and that part kind of, it sucked. <clears throat> I always love to get this feedback on this question here. I, of course, we'll get to the song here in a little bit. Um, a lot of artists, you know, t say today, you know, it's like, I'm glad I own my own content. Um, and, and this is no, again, what I'm about to say is no disrespect to anyone in the industry or to anybody who has a record label. Um, Cause if you do great for you, if you don't, then when I had Cody Jinx on uh, last year, Cody talked about, you know, being independent and having his fans kind of flock and follow to where he goes. And you either like my music or you don't. Uh, but the, the biggest thing, you know, at least appreciate what I've done out there with my talents for you. I know you had signed with EMG records in 2019, I believe. Walk me through that process. I know now you're probably more, I'm just guessing on the independent side. Is that, or the, is the record deal still there? Or what? Take me through that process with everything with EMG and looking through that, was it harder to kind of get songs out there independently? Was it easier with a record label? Because I believe there's pros and cons to both. Yeah. I think, you know, going through looking at um, independent labels, that was, they, they all offer, different variations of services. Um, for me, one of the things that I was really adamant about was that I own my music, that, you know, anything that I put out there, um, I don't need some guy above me saying, do this, do this, do this, do this, because I just I don't have time for that. And um, it's like, you want to work together and make this awesome collaboration. I'm in. But when you start telling me you got to do this, you got to do this, that's not going to work for me. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we chopped around a few labels, um, had approached me and, um, something just didn't feel right, you know? So, um, Chaz Childers, my producer, he owns EMG records. Um, great, amazing guy. Um, he just wants to make great music. So he, you know, he's been in the business for a really long, long time. So he, you know, gives you the pros and the cons and it's, it's very black and white. Um, mm -hmm. he's up front and that was, that's what drew me in. It was like, you know, I feel like in today's day and age, um, we have a lot of platforms that give us the ability to put out music and to reach our fans on this, you know, bigger level than what we had, you know, in the 50s, 60s and 70s. Um, mm -hmm. You know, people are, are breaking that glass ceiling and, and punching through doors that, you know, we don't have to follow this norm of this is what the execs say and this is what goes and this is the only thing they're going to play. I mean, we're still up against that, you know, now, but 
we have an easier time of getting around those barriers. And so that was really important to me um, when I signed with um, EMG. And um, I mean, we, we, we went a whole year, you know, put together my first DP, uh, Roots and Dreams, and mm -hmm. um, which was phenomenal. Um, enough so that we sold our house in Idaho and packed up everything that we had and moved to Tennessee uh, in July. And uh, I'm working on my next DP and, you know, we're, we found band members. We're putting a band back together and I've awesome. got a great group of guys. So yeah, it's, it's been, it's been great. <clears throat> I love the story you told there. I love the journey and getting with the right people, you owning your own content, more of what Cody, what Cody had to say, you know, back then. The fact is uh, not that we don't necessarily need, need that. It's just, we have, we get a feel of where we want to go, what yep. we want to do with our music, how we want our sound to be, what song selections to put on certain right. albums. So I think that's it's it's uh, uh, tried and true, no doubt about it. Love that. Well, I tell you what, time to bring back in the guitar player. Let's do yeah. that and uh, let us get after this next one. I'm gonna ask you. I'll, I'll be curious about this. I love this one because um, one of my favorite ones that I got to listen to was uh, a love song uh, behind the whiskey. I cannot wait to yeah. to talk about that one too as well. That's a great great tune out there. So it's one of my favorites for sure. <laughs> <laughs> You said we had the perfect life, you were the perfect man, and I was your perfect wife. And everything that I held dear, got lost in the whiskey and beer, your eyes lost their shine. Baby, don't you miss me? Can't the devil set you free? Can't you see? And I still love the man behind the whiskey, behind the whiskey, behind the hurt, behind the shame, behind the guilt and this claim. Still love the man behind the whiskey. Throw out demons that keep you away, lock you up, shut you down at the end of the day, turn off the voices, turn off that song in your head, put the bottle down, come on home to me instead, from behind the whiskey, can't the devil shut you free, and can't you see, that I still love the man behind the whiskey, behind the whiskey, behind the hurt, behind the shame, behind the guilt and who's to blame, still love the man behind the whiskey, and no more you. Staying up till dawn, no more lonely nights. And baby, please come back. Behind the whiskey. Can't you see? I still love the man behind the whiskey, behind the whiskey, behind the hurt, behind the shame, behind the guilt and who's to blame, behind the hurt, behind the shame, behind the guilt and who's to blame. Still love the man. Behind the whiskey. Behind the whiskey. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. 
Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. I just like those vocals, super smooth and warm finish. And definitely, um, you listen to a song behind the whiskey as we're presented by Bangtail Whiskey here on the Backstage Pass. And uh, like I said, you hear something like that. I want to know all about this because uh, personal, special song to you, uh, beautiful ballad. Um, and I believe it was written for your daughter. Is that correct? Actually, this one was written by my husband. Your husband. Um, okay. For you. Okay. Tell yeah. me all about this one. I have a beautiful song. Yeah, he wrote this one, um, you know, basically – um, about anybody that's ever struggled with, you know, addiction in general, but you know, this one being drinking, um, my real dad was a raging alcoholic that I didn't really have much, um, to do with. And I feel like that happens to, you know, a lot of people. And, um, from a wife perspective, a, a spouse or a girlfriend or whatever, um, you know, it's <clears> like <throat> it, it takes over a person and, and changes them. But, you know, we know that somewhere inside, you know, that there's, the, the person that we love that we fell in love with. And, you know, it's that plea for, you know, get help or um, change your behavior or stop drinking or whatever, you know, so that we can, you know, go back to the way that we were. So it's a, it was a, a, a good personal tune that my husband put together. And I, he, I think he was actually going to sing it himself. And then I liked it. And so I, I, I stole it. <laughs> <laughs> you just took it. We borrow it. That's all we do. We don't steal it. We just borrow it. That's mine, all we do. Mine, mine. You know <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, this uh, other one that I'm excited about that we talked about um, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, Love You Like You're Leaving. Tell me about this because I know this is a new single and uh, people can check, check it out too, which is out there across, uh, I believe, uh, Spotify and uh, the different platforms. Uh, how did this come about? And I know it's it's very special to you too. Um, so I was actually, there's a gal, um, that I follow on Instagram, a young gal, um, her name is Ava page. Mm -hmm. Um, she's battling childhood leukemia. Um, she's, she's amazing. I, I got to meet her in person last year at the Josie awards and just, um, just as good as they come by. Um, so I've been following her Instagram page for a few years and uh, one night I was laying in bed, Idaho time. It was about 11 and, uh, she and, uh, Corley Barker, um, uh, Terry Wayne and Kelly Johnson, I think, mm -hmm. um, had written that song that day and she was playing it and she had kind of debuted it on Instagram. And I just sat there sobbing. I was like, oh man, this is a, like a, just a, a, a I knew it was a great song. And so I told my husband, I said, I don't know how this works, but I'm going to, I'm going to call Chaz and I'm going to tell him I want to record the song. Cause they all kind of know each other in that group of people, um, songwriters. Mm -hmm. and stuff. So, um, I actually, sent him a message and I said, Hey, you know, I, I heard a song that Ava did today and I really, I absolutely love it. Um, is there a chance, you know, how do we make that work um, so that I can record it? Well, it actually turns out that um, Corey, after the song was done, had sent it to Chaz as a pitch um, for me to sing. And so I, I feel like it was fate. So um, yeah, I couldn't wait to, to sing that song. So we sent it to Nashville to get, you know, the instrumentation done and, mm -hmm. um, and get it out there as my next single. So Beautiful song. Like I said, check it out out there. Love you like you're leaving. Dusty Lee out there. Came out, I believe, uh, July 30th. Was that correct? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. I got all these dates in my head. I got to remember. I was actually in, uh, I think I was talking to you via email or texting or something like that. And I said, you know, mm -hmm. can't wait to get her too. And I was out in Arizona enjoying too much Cardinal football at Cardinal training camp out there, which is still, I love my NFL. Anybody knows me knows I love my Cardinals. That's just the way it goes there. Right. <laughs> Big game coming up this week with the Los Angeles Rams. And of course, tonight, Monday night football. Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles, uh, also a Cowboy fan in this household. But when they play each other, it's Arizona all the way for me. Wow. So I uh, got to root for Dallas tonight. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Speaking of rapid fire, I'm going to go into it now. And definitely we're going to have you back on. Hope you had a great time today. And yeah, we're looking absolutely. forward to uh, having you back with new singles and, and definitely EPs or whatever music uh, is coming out for the future. Like I said, you guys are already working on the next project. And one thing I know about musicians, they never rest on their laurels. There's always songs in the can ready to roll. Ready to get out there to their fans and the public. All right, a couple of little rapid fire things. We'll finish up um, binge watching. What do you like to do? What's been on the tube lately? Ooh, Yellowstone. 
Oh, I love that show. Hurry <laughs> <laughs> okay, up and bring it back because that's yeah, I love it. If we took a poll on this show, that would always come out number one. Yellowstone, <laughs> check that box, check that box. That's right. And that's that's just for Yellowstone out there. For me, I tell you, it, it's um, it's been a couple things. Uh, Outer Banks has been a good bench okay, series. I have a funny story about Outer Banks. Okay. okay. So, um, the blonde kid that's on. Yeah. Banks, um, mm -hmm. I used to be his teacher. Really? Okay. <laughs> was a substitute teacher when we lived in. We were stationed in Ketchikan, Alaska. And um, Rudy was in like fifth and sixth grade. And um, I, one of his main teachers was out for a prolonged surgery. And so I was like the substitute teacher for half the year. Um, great kid. Like he's, we knew he was going to be famous. Um, mm -hmm. He's got another younger brother that's great too. But yeah, so when that show made it big, um, I actually was like, we used to, and I, I taught PE for a while too, um, one of the years mm -hmm. that we used to play dodgeball and it always came down to him and I, always. And uh, so when his thing went, you know, when he went viral and he was this big star, I was like, we've come a long way since our dodgeball days, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> that's a cool, cool story too. Yeah, what a great sure. actor he's turned out to be. And that's just a great series. And the other one for me has been that Cobra Kai. Love yeah. that, bringing back the Karate Kid continuation Absolutely. of it. And yeah, Johnny Lawrence and, and just Ralph Macho doing nostalgia his nostalgia right there, man. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> he's nostalgia, no doubt. All right, we'll finish on this one. Uh, Jeff Carson coming up here in a little bit here on the backstage pass presented by Bangtail Whiskey. Um, bucket list vacation. You, you pit when all this is over, officially over, I guess is the word to use. Where are you going? You staying in the states? Or are you going somewhere else? Uh, Italy, Aus Austria for Christmas, Italy. And then Italy, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Three times, Italy. I, I'm doing that too. Italian descent and, and yep. definitely want to go over there and see uh, ancestors, history of it, uh, taste the pasta, of course, the food. Wine, pasta. Wine, yes. Wine, pasta. Wine. <laughs> <laughs> Two things we go to Italy for, which is out there. And uh, I, I love it so much. And hey, I loved it so much today. We're going to have to have you back. Uh, love you like you're leaving is the current single out there across all the platforms. Dusty Lee Music on Facebook and across all the socials. Uh, Dusty, love the first name. Loved everything about you, your presence, your vocals, and the music. And definitely feel free to come back anytime here on the show. Hope you had a great time. I did. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. You got it. Uh, Jeff Carson coming up here in a little bit. Uh, at BMRL10 on Twitter. The Backstage Pass on Facebook is the Backstage Pass 409. And, of course, you can catch us at the Backstage Pass YouTube channel. We'll catch up with Jeff here in just a little bit. On the show, joined by Jeff McMahon. Again, thanks to Bangtail Whiskey, and we'll see you guys here in just a few. Hang tight.